If I'm honest, when I first saw the Lenovo Flex 5 Chromebook out at CES back in January, I kind of shrugged my shoulders. It just looked like another Chromebook. And for all intents and purposes, it kind of is just another Chromebook. But there are some things in this device that set it apart and make it what I feel like is going to be something that disrupts the entire Chrome OS ecosystem. And I want to talk to you about all those things, all the goods, all the bads, and all the ways I think this just kind of nondescript looking Chromebook is gonna make a big difference in the market. Before we get into all that, this video is brought to you by NordVPN. They're the VPN of choice for millions of customers because they're awesome at what they do, and that is keeping your browsing safe and secure, whether you're at home or on the go. If you'd like to learn more about them and their services, head over to chromeunbox.com forward slash NordVPN to learn more and get started today. Before we get into all the pieces of this review, just like the duet before it, I want to mention the price of this device. Now this is the top level one you can buy right now and it's only $409 MSRP. So that's no deals, that's no bargains, that's no discounts. That's what it cost out of the box at any retailer at any given time. So that's an important thing to note because just like with the duet, price informs your purchasing decisions. And so whenever you have a device at six or $700, there are things that we can get a little nitpicky about. Whenever devices are like 400 bucks and they compete with devices that are six and $700, there's certain things I'm gonna give it a pass on. So as we go through all these pieces here, I wanna mention that right up front because it's very important to the makeup of this Chromebook. So let's start with the build quality. Uh, I'd give it a solid B plus to an A here. And it's, you know, this is a convertible Chromebook. There's nothing flashy about the way it looks. Uh, it's kind of boxy in its design. The keyboard deck is made of some sort of plastic, but the bottom is definitely aluminum. The top is aluminum. The color looks good. And again, this thing's not gonna turn heads or make you think, oh my gosh, this is the best looking device I've ever seen. It's like right at three pounds, like 2.97 pounds or something like that. 17 millimeters thick, so not the thinnest thing in the world. But overall, it feels solid, it feels good in the hand, there's never a creakiness or a bendiness to the whole device, and it just feels like it's put together well. And Lenovo's the one that pioneered the whole transforming device and 360 hinge, so they've kind of got that nailed now. So you get a nice you know, amount of flex in the screen, you know, so it's easy to convert, but it's not flopping all over the place. And there's enough substance here to make the thing feel, you know, just like a good Chromebook. Uh, it's really kind of hard to, to put into words exactly why I like the way this thing looks. Maybe it just kind of feels like home. It's just comfortable feeling. It looks fine. It, it feels fine. There's nothing about it that feels off-putting and there's nothing about it that's amazing. It's just well built and well put together. Moving on to the screen, again, this is a device that for $400 punches above its weight class a little bit. It's a 1080p, 16 by nine, 13.3 inch, full HD LCD panel, and it looks good. It's 300 nits in brightness, has good viewing angles, the colors are nice and punchy. It's pretty much everything you could ask for in a Chromebook display. And a lot of displays in this price category end up being a little bit uh, more washed out or they aren't quite as vibrant or they're dim. And that's just not the case with this. Set up next to something like the Pixelbook Go, for instance, it's almost hard to tell the difference between the two. And we've kind of held that screen up as one that we would say is good, not fantastic, but good enough to not really feel like you're missing out on anything. And that's the case here. This is a good display on a device that costs much less than other Chromebooks with much worse displays on them. Above the screen is a 720p webcam. And while I really wish that manufacturers would get away from this and at least get to a 1080p webcam, especially in the world we live in now, now where you know video chatting is much more of a normal occurrence uh, it's nice that they've put in a built-in privacy screen on this so with those you know smallish bezels around the screen there's enough room for this kind of manual slider that actually slides a piece of plastic right over the webcam so for all of you out there that like to put a piece of tape over or a post-it note or something like that over your webcam you can forget about having to do that anymore. This isn't a software turn on, turn off. You can see the thing sliding in front of it. So no matter whether that camera's on or not, you can slide this over and completely block your webcam. And it's a nice little touch. Moving on down to the keyboard, this was actually a huge surprise for me. Lenovo makes good keyboards. And so I wasn't really worried that this wasn't gonna be a good keyboard. I was just shocked at how much I've liked this keyboard. Even moving back from it to the Pixelbook Go, which I hold up as maybe the best keyboard I've ever typed on, I actually think I prefer typing on this one. 
And maybe it's just a little bit of additional key travel here that Lenovo has over something like the Samsung Galaxy Chromebook or the Pixelbook Go. I don't know what it is, but it's a combination of that extra key travel and maybe a little bit more clickiness in the keys. But this thing feels great. I don't make nearly as many mistakes as I make on any other keyboard. And ultimately, when it comes time to sit down and write a 1,000 or 1,500 word article, I tend to want to pick this device up mainly because of its keyboard. Additionally, with the Core i3 model, this isn't true of the Celeron models, you actually get backlighting on the keys too. And again, in a $400 Chromebook, these are some things you just don't really expect to have, and it hasn't. So it's just a nice touch that there's backlighting on the keys as well. Beneath that great keyboard is a really good trackpad. I don't want to call it a great trackpad because it's not glass. I did find out Lenovo says it is made of Mylar. So a plasticky type of material. But what I'll say for the trackpad is it's generously spaced. The click mechanism is great. It's set in very nice, so it's not flopping around. It doesn't move or shift under your fingers. And the surface resists oils very, very well. Matter of fact, I would say it resists oils almost as well as a glass trackpad. When we first got it out and unboxed it, I was a little concerned about it, but the room we were in was super humid. It was really muggy and my hands were clammy and all that kind of stuff. Since that day, I don't think I've wiped off the trackpad a single time. And I've been using this thing full time all day at work, at home and all that kind of stuff and it's just performed admirably for something that's not made of glass. One other input method this device has that we can't exactly test right now is USI pen input. Now, you'll probably have this Chromebook for a long time, so it's nice to know that it's there once USI pens start to hit the market and you can go choose which pen you'd like to use for whatever Chromebook you want. But for right now, the only one we have is a pre-production unit from HP and using it on different devices that support USI pens, it's not been great. And we don't know if that's because USI is not great or if it's because that pen is just not functioning correctly. So until we get a production one in, we're gonna hold off on any of our comments about how it works. Just know this device will work with the USI stylus down the road. Around the outside of the device, you'll see a nice array of ports as well. So we've got a USB Type-C on both sides of it uh, that can handle data transfer, video output, charging, all the normal things that USB Type-C can do. You've also still got a USB Type-A. So for those legacy things, those dongles and stuff, you can kind of leave behind because you've got a USB Type-A port when you need it. You also have a micro SD card slot to expand the storage inside a headphone microphone jack and a Kensington lock. And obviously on the side there are power and volume rocker buttons in the event that you choose to use this thing as a convertible and in tablet mode from time to time. Also, it's worth noting this thing has upward firing speakers and while they're not the greatest speakers you've ever seen, it's nice to have forward facing speakers because you don't have to worry about whether the device is sitting in your lap or how you have it oriented. The, the sound is always kind of coming right up at your face. And so it's a nice touch, even though they're not the best speakers in the world, it's kind of nice to have. Inside, the device that we have here is the 10th Gen Core i3 U-Series processor with four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage. It's worth noting that there are four models of this device that are slated to become available in the coming months. Two of those are with the Celeron U-Series processor, uh, one with four gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of internal storage, the other with four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of internal storage. There's also going to be a much uh, higher end version of this thing that's eventually going to become available with a Core i5 U-Series processor, uh, 128 gigs of internal storage, eight gigs of RAM, and that storage is gonna be NVMe. We don't know pricing on that particular model yet, and it's not available, it's not even being listed just yet, so we're not even really talking about it yet. We'll probably make another video about that device when and if it comes out and shows up in the United States. But for right now, we're dealing with three versions of this thing. And by far and away, the Core i3 model is the one that I would easily tell everyone to go and look for and buy. Because ultimately, the Celeron model that's all the way at the bottom, so the four gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of internal storage versus the Core i3 with four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, oh, an additional backlighted keyboard, only has a span of $50 in difference between the prices. So. It's very difficult for me to tell anyone to go and save 50 bucks, lose keyboard backlighting, take a much slower processor, and lose internal storage when for $50 you can just upgrade to this one. And by the way, as we're making this video, the i3 one's the only one that's available. And that's good news because that's the one I would recommend that you go buy anyway. Because at this kind of price break, it's just not worth losing out on some of those features that this particular device has. Not surprisingly, this thing moves along extremely fast. I mean, it's the same core i3 U-series processor we saw in the Asus Flip C436. And 
you didn't expect an $800 Chromebook to be slow or sluggish. It's fun to use. You don't really ever have to sit and think about whether or not the device is going to respond when you need it to. And not one time during my testing process did I run into a situation where I thought, man, I could really use more processing power. I mean, this thing's kind of a beast, honestly. It's also worth noting that this device, like other newer Intel Chromebooks that are coming out this year, is also equipped with Bluetooth 5 and Wi-Fi 6. So, Many of you probably don't have access to a Wi-Fi 6 router yet, but again, just like everything else, you will. Over the course of eight years, the coffee shops you go into, a lot of homes you go into, your own home likely, if you upgrade your router, are going to have Wi-Fi 6. And that is going to be a benefit down the road because it's gonna provide much faster data speeds, much better performance in crowded spaces where there's tons of other devices trying to vie for that Wi-Fi data. So you're gonna enjoy that as time goes on. And Bluetooth 5 is a much more stable connection with a much better Bluetooth stack that's going to behave much better than Chromebooks of the past that always had Bluetooth connection issues. I connected all kinds of things to this thing with Bluetooth and didn't have any Bluetooth connection issues either. So you've likely picked up on the language throughout each piece of this review of you should buy. You might want to buy this one instead of that one, or if, if when this one becomes available, you could buy this. And that's because at the end of the day, this is going to be a Chromebook I recommend all the time, mainly because of its price point and what it offers at that price point. There's just nothing like it at this price. There are tons of devices that are 50 to $75 cheaper than it, but they're not even close to the quality that you get here. They're not close to the experience that you get here. And what I've experienced with this Chromebook is that while I'm using it, I'm not finding myself wishing I had a six or $700 Chromebook, not at all. I was completely satisfied with this device. So much so that this might just become my new daily driver because I love carrying it around knowing I'm not having to you know, hold a device that cost $1,000 and I, I don't wanna drop it and I wanna make sure to hold on to it and, and I'm nitpicking every little thing about it because it costs so much. None of those things entered my mind. This is just a solid Chromebook that I supremely enjoyed using the entire time I've had it. And yeah, we'll probably have to send this one back to Lenovo now that our review's just about done, but I'm gonna go on Amazon and buy one for myself because I love this Chromebook and I think you're gonna love this Chromebook too. And I think what Lenovo has done here is created some real disruption in the market. They have created a great device at an insane price point that other people are going to just have to match or else everyone's just gonna go buy this instead. Why would you go spend six, seven, eight hundred dollars on a device that does all the things that this one does when this one's four hundred dollars? You wouldn't, and nobody else is going to either. And I think what they've done is created a scenario where other manufacturers are gonna to have to respond to what they've created with the Flex 5. And I hate the fact that I went out to Vegas and I saw this and just kind of shrugged it off and moved on. I completely missed it, but that doesn't mean that you have to completely miss it. The $409 Core i3 model is available for order. And as much as I've ever recommended someone go buy a Chromebook, I recommend you go buy this Chromebook. If this is something that sits in the price category you're looking at and the feature set that you're looking for because you will love this device. It is fantastic. Uh, I've loved my time with it. And again, I think that you will too, but that's it for this one. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, go down there and hit that subscribe button. Make sure and hit the notification bell if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. And don't forget to hit the join button as well if you'd like to see all the stuff that our members get like behind the scenes footage and custom emoji. Till next time, we'll see you.